we're going to briefly look at what do we need in a written up lab for high school. Obviously we need a title. Now in our title you need to be talking about three things. What you changed, what you measured, and for biology in what species. That is important because many different species act differently. You then need an aim. What are you actually trying to do? What are you investigating? Just one sentence. After this, different teachers, different schools, all talk about the same stuff, but potentially in a different order. I'm going to say that next we need a hypothesis. Hypothesis is just a very long word for a prediction. The best format for that is if I change this, then something will happen because of some reason. Now at the more advanced levels of school, you'd actually research your reason. Don't just say it will change. That helps nobody. How will it change? It is supposed to be a prediction. After our hypothesis, we then have, depending on where you are, variables. This is basically where we tie things down. You don't get a cake recipe that says take some flour, some sugar and put it in an oven for some time. You have details. Best way I know of to do this is a giant table. Tell us your independent variable, the one you're going to change. Tell us your dependent variable, the one you're going to measure and tell us your controlled variables or your constant variables. Now you need to tell us two things, what it is and how you will change or control it. This is where students tend to mess up. You need details. Details really boils down to numbers. If you can say I will use a 5 gram mass, it's tied down. If you say I will time it for 20 seconds, it is tied down. If you don't do that, you're creating problems for yourself. It's not controlled. We then are going to look at what you actually do. This could be called a method, it can be called a procedure, a lot of different things. Some people will put an equipment list beforehand, some people put it inside. How I organize it, our procedure, big word for method. So we need equipment or apparatus. I don't care which, as long as it's clear. So that would be section A. I need a beaker. I need a frog. That is not a good equipment list. What beaker? Okay, 50 milliliter beaker times one. What frog do you need? Put in the species name, two words, etc. Add details. Again, think of a cake recipe. It tells you how much of each thing you need. After our apparatus list, you next need to tell us what are you actually doing. A method, some schools, especially with younger students, call this steps. Step one, blip, 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 blip. Step two, all the way down to your last step where you need to be telling people what data you are collecting. No point telling people how to set it up. You need to be saying what data is collected. You need to make sure somewhere here you talk about repeats so that people know you actually did repeat it. Finally, part C, a diagram of what you're actually doing. They say that a picture is worth a thousand words. You spend some time, you rule up a beautiful diagram, Bunsen burner, heat gauze, my beautifully ruled beaker, water, thermometer, Bunsen, badly drawn, yahoo, 100 milliliters of water. All your labels can be put in. Now, this can save you a lot of time because one of my favorite first steps, that's sad, I have one, is set up equipment like in diagram. That can save you a lot of lines of writing. It's clear, it's easy to follow. This is what you need to be producing in order to do well. This is your plan, this is your proposal, this is your cake recipe, telling people what you did, how to do it. No one will win a Nobel Prize if they turn lead to gold unless they show other people how they did it. Good luck.